stay my blade from the flesh of the innocent. Hide in plain sight. Never compromise the Assassin Brotherhood. These are the tenets of the Creed. The principles I used to live by. I was a young man then. The Seven Years' War was about to begin. I could not have imagined what the future had in store for me, nor the cost I would choose to bear. My name is Shay Patrick Cormac. This is my story. I nearly had you. <laughs> nearly counts for nothing, Shay. And besides, no. That was just luck. <laughs> I make my own luck, Liam. Ah, you've been saying that for years, but you're precious little to show for it. Or have you been spending it all getting out of trouble? Well, you know, trouble just follows me around. Let's head back. Come on, Captain Deliver André and his crew must have run into some. Tr Who knew meeting with smugglers would lead to no good? I still don't understand why you can't tell me what we're doing here. Because Chevalier decided not to tell you. I thought we were friends, Liam. We are. But this is business. It doesn't concern you, Shay. I'm going too fast for you. I'm just keeping an eye on you in case you fall down and hurt yourself. Now that's booty. Hurry, the best not. Waiting. Oh, saucy cutter. There's 
they step in. Where the hell were you two? We were out hunting. What happened here? My men were attacked by some English sea dogs. Why, Captain Joseph, couldn't you fight them all off by yourself like you're always saying? It is Capitaine Louis-Joseph Gauthier, Chevalier de la Véranderie. And you are dreaming if you think any training could make you into a proper assassin. Do you even know what that means? It means being responsible for an ancient and proud tradition. It means obeying your mentor without question. How else will we ensure freedom for the human race? Them's pretty words, Chevalier. But I don't feel too free at the moment. Well then, feel educated! I will teach you some manners, boy. How dare you show me such disrespect! Gentlemen, stop! We got a common enemy, and I reckon he's close. The Royal Navy attack my vessel and force my men to flee. We are stranded, and what is worse, the smugglers we were supposed to meet have been taken prisoner. Shay and I'll free those smugglers. You, treat your wounded. Take these. You'll need them. Tread with care, Shay. The Royal Navy be ready for us. Remember your training. Ready to teach them a lesson? They don't stand a chance. Where are you, mates, now, you built rat? Talk before I bash out your brains! We will find them and let them bury what's left of you. Oh, there. Tread with care, Shay. The Royal Navy be ready for us. Remember you. Ready to teach them a lesson? They don't stand a chance. Where are your mates bad. now, you bilge rat? Talk before I bash out your brains! Keep an eye out, lads! The pals are still out there somewhere! There he Thank goes you. again.
Many thanks. I thought I'd be hanged.
I was saving those fellas for you. Very thoughtful. Maybe you were not completely useless, Shake. Speaking of useless, those blockheads won't be needing this vessel anymore. This pile of mail? You want her, Shay? She is yours. Now bring me back to my ship. You heard, Chevalier? This vessel is yours, Shay. Go on. Take the wheel. Some of the men you rescued agreed to join us. They should prove a good crew. I'm not so certain. Captain, but next to me, you are the most experienced sailor in. Besides, could use another vessel, even this pitiful one. She's mine, ain't she? My own ship. Your own pile of garbage, yes. Ah, with a lick of paint and a few new cannons, she'll look as fine as anything on the seven seas. Shall we begin, Captain? Indeed, mate. She's a mess, but she's still afloat. And her name's the Morgan. Morgan? That silly fairy queen who ruined Merlin, the wise? Oh, she's perfect for you, Shay. The Morgan was an old goddess, a queen of war and darkness. She harvested the souls of fallen warriors. Perfect indeed. They will sink her! Let's put the Morrigan to the test, Captain Shay. Ready for battle, man! Awaiting orders, sir! She's breaking up! She's fire! Reloading! Stop them, boy! We need a mark! Brace for impact! Brief it on, Tops! Fire! Yeah! They're tearing her to pieces! Do something! Fire! She's standing! Ready to My fire! My ship! Vessel is battle ready after all. I will return to what is left. I get full. It's a long way home. Sing hearty, lads! Chevaliers, please with us! What course would you have me set, Shay? Time to report back to the mentor. Wouldn't you agree? Wise words, Captain. Wise words. What the hell did you do? It's... some kind of dormant virus? Shit! Hang on, I'm getting you out of there. Sorry for the rough exit. Your piece working? Check. 
You were just in an animus. Animus, yes? You were using it to access a genetic memory file in Helix labeled Shea Cormac? You worked for Abstergo Entertainment, remember? Any of this ringing a bell? Your session triggered something bad, and it's affecting the whole building. We need to find your boss. You haven't forgotten your boss, have you? Melanie LeMay, zipper, chipper, overachiever? Here, take your communicator, check it if you get lost. Now let's get out of here. Follow me. Double time. This chaos is absolutely your fault, Come in on, case everyone. you're wondering. Just like we practiced in our safety drills. Everything is gonna be okay, guys. Stay positive. What the hell is happening? A file labeled Shea Cormac was booby-trapped with some kind of virus. Your job is to prevent things like this. We need to contain these genetic memories, then we can destroy them. No. Isolate them. I want to study these memories. But... With respect, Miss LeMay, this is not a request. You heard the man. Fine. I need to borrow your numbskull. That okay with you, Ms. LeMay? Hey there, this might seem a bit weird, but you're gonna work for contractors we hire to, you know, upgrade our security. Mr. Otto Berg and Ms. Violet DaCosta. Call me Violet. I have to go check on our people and prepare a statement for the press. Do whatever they tell you to do, okay? Go team! Technically, you're not responsible for this, but you're the one who let the virus out. So I think it's only fair you help me clean it up. Mr. Berg wants us to relive Shay's genetic memories. To do that, we need to access them from Helix. But the Helix is down. We'll have to reboot the main servers in the basement. Man, whoever designed this virus is a genius. Not only does it restrict our access to the cloud, it's adapted to fuck up the other operating systems that regulate building functions. Melanie? The elevators are out of commission. Are we stuck on this floor? Damn, yes. I'll get a repair crew on site ASAP. There's a working area server on this floor. I guess it'll have to do for now. Agent DaCosta, I want regular updates on your progress with Shay's genetic memories. Why? He's just a nobody as far as I can tell. If Shay Cormac is who I suspect he is, then this temporary setback may provide us with an unexpected reward. Proceed to the server room on this floor. to acquire an apple of Eden. I see instead a shrewd and cunning leader. A man who used his best assassin, Altair ibn Lahad, to eliminate his conspirators in order to keep the apple for himself, so that he could use it to enforce world peace. While it must be stated unequivocally that Al-Mu'alim was not a Templar, it is interesting to me that his vision of peace was more in line with Templar Workstations, if you, you know, feel like being helpful. And you could, in theory, find some more digital goodies if you, you know, feel like being sneaky. Hey, one of your co workers dropped his communicator by the elevator. If you see any tech lying around like that, grab him. There might be a 
clue as to who did this. Now that you have unlocked Shea Cormac's memories, we stand on the brink of a grand discovery. I know you must have questions about your new assignment, or about me. For now, all I will say is that Shay's story contains the answers. Shay will lead you to a greater understanding.
Okay. The numbskull is in another animus session, and I have required caffeine. All is right with the world. Good. This isn't really your kind of mission, is it, boss? Every mission is important in its own way. Still, I bet you'd rather be out with the rest of the team, hunting Sean Hastings or something. Wouldn't you? Hell yeah. I want a front row seat for that show. Any word from Sorkin? He's scheduled to update me in... 43 minutes. Good. Can I ask you something? Of course. What's it like, using an Animus? I went through the Animai training program. It felt like the drills we used to do in the UT Jaeger. You never use a normal Animus like this one? To relive your own genetic history? Only once. Really? Who were you? I was a young man. On the Viking raid on Lindsay Farn. 793, northeastern coast of England. Sorry, history nerd. So, how was it? It was summer. Good sailing weather. The monastery was a center for religious studies, and we crashed into the city like a tidal wave. And? And? We pillaged and burned. They thought we were demons. The details of the memory were so vivid. I lost myself in the bloodlust. I defeated a Saxon. A great warrior. But did not want to kill him. I invited him to join our clan. Ah, Norse adoption rituals. The chance to sail the world with the Vikings. Yes. A chance to see the world as it really is. What happened then? He wept. Then he cried out that God had abandoned his people and that nothing remained but chaos. I felt such pity for him. I killed him without a second thought. After we're done here, are we gonna have to kill the numbskull? We will see. Nathan Kenway remains a controversial figure for me. I have great respect for him. After all, he was the Grand Master of the Colonial Rite, charged with finding a precursor site. Haytham was cunning and ruthless, but he had a streak of emotional weakness that ultimately triggered his downfall. He lost his father when he was a child, and the British Grand Master Reginald Birch raised him to become a Templar Knight. Haytham eventually learned that his father, Edward, had been an assassin. That he chose to stay a Templar, rather than follow in his father's footsteps, indicates to me that he believed he was already on the right path. When Haytham discovered that Birch was the one who murdered his father, he and his sister killed him in revenge. I believe this was the beginning of his downfall. Templars kill for efficiency, not petty emotions. When he discovered that his son, Connor, was an assassin working against him in the colonies, the same emotional weakness stayed his blade. A pity Connor did not show him the same mercy.